Hello, space friends. Captain Snuggles here, back in Space Haven to continue the voyage of the Snuggernaut. I'm using the word continue very generously there, because last time we only took the very first jump of our voyage. We still have a very, very long way to go. We'll need to travel hundreds of jumps, build this tiny little ship into a massive supercarrier, find ourselves an equally massive crew, and, of course, carry out our humanitarian mission along the way. As a reminder, I'm on a real-life humanitarian mission as well, raising money for my local children's hospital. Please consider donating via the link in the video description. It makes a huge difference for sick kids and their families. With your support, I've already made some good progress on that humanitarian mission, but before we can make any progress on our in-game humanitarian mission, the Snuggernaut needs to become worthy of its name. We've made that very first jump and dropped into a system with a leisure station in it. And, as you might expect, this is a nice, easy, friendly system. We're taking some time to check out the leisure station, chat with some people there, and meanwhile, back on Snuggernaut, we are expanding the hull, updating the paint job, of course, very important, and we're also adding some extra propulsion to, you know, push our expanded hull. I'm also currently agonizing over where to put my new ore processor, which is going to let us actually fully utilize the asteroids we encounter in this system. In addition, now that I finally got that put down, I'm going to expand this bow out some so that I can move the bridge from the cargo hold where it is currently and actually give it its proper dedicated bridge space. Now I know I said this was a nice friendly system, which is not entirely true. There is a derelict here and it is full of bugs, but, well, there's the, the minor issue for them, which is that my guys have guns, uh, and bugs don't. So, this just being the first uh, non-starter system, it's still pretty easy, and I cleared that derelict out no problem. Now I'm just back to the Snuggernaut, continuing to work on expanding the bridge forward, while also trading for the resources I need. You can see me buying some infra blocks and tech blocks there, those are both in seriously short supply in these opening few jumps. So anytime I can get some, I'm going to sell whatever I need to sell to get them. That bridge expansion is uh, almost built in terms of just the pure hull. Of course, I still have to actually move the bridge. And you are going to see me face a few issues like that one right there. As an asteroid slams into the ship, punches a hole in the bell, and, uh, well, vents the atmosphere and freezes it, which kills uh, half the plants that I have growing up there. Now, just that little bit wasn't the end of the world, but it is a, a harbinger of things to come, as well, one of the bits of research you do not start out with is shielding for your ship. So I'm currently incapable of making a shield module, which means that uh, I'm pretty much incapable of keeping that from happening, keeping asteroids from hitting me. I do have a point defense turret, but just the one turret is only going to do so much. That notwithstanding, I am making some good progress on the ship. You can see I have moved my bridge modules forward, and I'm using uh, the space I've saved in the cargo hold to put an extra airlock in and an extra oxygen generator as well. Now, it looks like I am actually going to cancel that airlock and just sort of save that space to build it later. And you'll see this quite a bit. Uh, I'll plan things out, then cancel them. I do have a vision. I know my, my end goal, but, you know, those intermediate steps of getting there, well, take a little bit of brain power, a little bit of trial and error, and this certainly doesn't help. I get absolutely walloped by an asteroid again. This one wasn't playing. Uh, I'm looking at six hull breaches right there, which is nasty business. You can see my crew having to run back and suit up, get their spacesuits, struggle to patch the hull breaches, uh, and the whole back of the ship 
got sent into deep freeze and vented of atmosphere. My oxygen generators are struggling to keep up, but we do manage to stabilize and save the food production. So that critical bow of the ship stayed unaffected, at least this time, and we're able to continue on with our construction. We've expanded the hole out a bit more, made ourselves some nice spaces where we're going to put in some additional food production. And of course, things never go according to plan. I jump into the next system, which is an asteroid field, uh, send my crew away on a, a derelict salvage mission, and immediately get blasted by another asteroid, which doesn't just punch holes, it starts fires. And the fires make heat and smoke. And at this point, the ship is... is in serious trouble. One of my crew is passed out on the floor, uh, another struggling to patch the holes, and I managed to open the airlock, vent the atmosphere, vent some of the smoke, and somewhat stabilize the temperature, which bought just enough time for the rest of the crew to return from the derelict, but I'm looking at the temperature and gas overlays, and they are bad. So, this one... <laughs> This one was bad. Uh, I lost all of the food production that I had just planted, took serious damage in the back of the ship, uh, and you can see those red indicators flashing everywhere. You can see the bare dirt in my hydroponics bays at the front of the ship. It is a nasty business, so this set me back a lot. But the ship's still flying, <laughs> miraculously. And although the crew's energy bars, those yellow bars there, are all dangerously low, although a lot of my equipment is damaged, well, we're able to start to recover, start to stabilize, start to make repairs. It's, uh, it's gonna be a long process. There's a lot to fix. And so, at this point, uh, the writing is on the wall for the Snuggernaut. If I cannot get these shields researched and installed, we're never going to make any real progress on this mission because the asteroid impacts like that are just going to happen again and again and set me back again and again. We might survive, but we're certainly not going to thrive. So, yeah, you can see Bertram up there researching away, and that's going to be the saving grace here. That's the name of the game, it's just researching these shields. Of course, shields won't solve all my problems. Even without hull breaches, you can see my plants have those flashing indicators, barely getting enough CO2. So I'm gonna fiddle with my crew schedule here, try to make sure that there are always humans uh, in the general vicinity of the plants to produce CO2, and try my best to avoid spending my precious tech blocks on CO2 producers. Uh, probably won't be able to avoid it for too much longer, but hopefully I can use my biological CO2 producers just a bit more. And after a little break, you see me come back into the game and start to uh, to play a little bit of Tetris. Start to really think about the the placement of my modules uh, and how I can possibly expand my defenses and make room for an eventual uh, bit of shielding. And of course, while I'm planning on how to defend myself from asteroids, I get hit by an asteroid, which destroys my food production again. Now I'm not completely out of food at this point, I do not know. Uh, I think I've just been uh, building more than I need and also buying it whenever I can. So uh, with that, uh, I've, finally, I've finally had enough. I'm building a forward expansion to house uh, one or two extra uh, point defense turrets as well as eventually my shields. Uh, unfortunately, as it turns out, I was researching composters that entire time. <laughs> Way to prioritize, Snuggles. Of course, uh, I guess the composters do contribute to the to the food production as well. You do, after all, need fertilizer to, to grow the food. So uh, I'm not sure that they were the most important thing I could have been researching there, but they contributed some, I guess. And meanwhile, just more Tetris, uh, hoping not to get blasted by any more asteroids, uh, and thinking about moving on to the next system. Powering up the hyperdrive, and after I place down my composter, I get out of there. Now things start to get good here. 
I jump into a system with two derelicts. The first one is pretty unimpressive, but the second one gets interesting. I'm still in the stage of the game where I'm just facing basic enemies, so these are just the crawler-type bugs. They're only melee, so I can pretty much blast them with impunity. You can see them get a couple of cheeky little bites in, uh, nipping at my ankles a bit, uh, which, well, it doesn't help that I sent in Delver with no gun. So I need to send him back home, back to the Snuggernaut, which frees up a slot on my four-man away team. And lo and behold, would you look what I found on the right side there. That is a hypersleep chamber with someone in it. Someone who might need our help. So we're going to get in there and crack it open and see who this Griffin character is. This is exciting. The first rescue for the Snuggernaut. A Griffin turns out to be a peace-loving driller. I don't love the peace-loving trait because, well, although we are humanitarians, we do still need to do some fighting. But she is still a good character. She has skills in mining and industry and botany, all of which we're going to need. And plus, beggars can't be choosers, and we really just need more crew at this point. So we gladly welcome Griffin to the team, use her to help uh, explore the derelict some, finish clearing it out, and are going to head back to the Snuggernaut. At this point, things are beginning to look up just a little bit, especially with the shield research finishing just now. Of course, we do still have to actually build the shield generator as well as the shield console to operate it, and unfortunately we just do not have the necessary materials right now. We're missing the infra blocks and the tech blocks specifically. So we're going to sit here and salvage these derelicts, try to get the resources we need, and plan the ship out a little bit. and build a couple of additions that won't take too many important resources away from us. So I'm popping down an autopsy table that will help my medical training and my food production if I get desperate enough. Figuring out the settings for that and continuing to just salvage, salvage, salvage. You can see one of my heaters is broken, but I do not have the infra blocks to fix it which is not great. And now I have an asteroid coming in again and <laughs> just can't catch a break. But what I can catch is a whole lot of asteroids as once again, whole bunch of holes poked in the ship, food production wiped out, bridge frozen, and I still don't even have the infra blocks to fix my heater. So yeah, the universe just has it out for me. Of course, you know, if I had researched the shield generator instead of the composter, maybe I wouldn't be in this position. So, well, that may be both the universe and myself have it out for me. But once again, we managed to stabilize, salvage enough materials to get the heater patched up, get the ship thawed out, and get the food planted once again, and are gradually building up towards having a shield console and a shield generator. I mean, we feel so close, but we're just not quite there yet. In this early stage of the game, infra blocks and tech blocks are such a limiting factor. It's ridiculous how much you have to just scrimp and save to build any little thing. Now, finally, as I get enough materials, uh, the universe gives me one last middle finger uh, pokes one more hole in the ship, but finally uh, I get enough materials to build a shield console and a shield generator, and I have the power for it. There we go. Plus 80 shields right before another asteroid hits, and lo and behold, this time there are no holes in the ship. Thank freaking goodness. This has been a long time coming, but the shields are finally up, and man am I happy about that. With that done, you can see we've been able to expand the ship a little bit more and build out those side corridors uh, around the airlock openings. So now you're finally starting to see the shape uh, of this portion of the ship uh, start to emerge with those holes carved out in the hull for the airlocks. You saw me doing some trading just now. 
and so I've stopped in this very striking looking system to basically purchase more food and more fertilizer because you can see in the top left my food supply is down to five days which is way less than I like to have on hand but uh, while I'm at it there is a derelict in this system and I want to go explore it so I'm gonna pop over there once again face just these dinky little crawlers no big deal at all Hopefully we have not reached the point in the game where the uh, the stage two enemies, the haulers, start to appear. Because those are, while they're still melee, they're a little bit more capable of actually uh, getting to your crew and dealing damage. So you can see I'm being cautious knowing that uh, those haulers could be in here. Carefully poking my head around each corner, really methodically clearing out each room. They've added weapon jams uh, in either this patch or the last one, and Hermione has a shotgun right now, and that thing jams a lot, which has been frustrating me, but what is much less frustrating is the appearance of a another hypersleep chamber, this time containing Ryu, which is uh, a great name. So let's uh, see in just a moment if the character lives up to the name. <laughs> But before that, I have opened up uh, one last uh, bunch of enemies. So I'm just going to try and clear out the ship, and I succeed, so now I can rescue Ryu uh, in relative peace. So let's see. And here it is. We have a winner. Ryu, the Iron-Willed Airline Pilot. This guy is going to be our first dedicated fighter pilot. Now, we've been limited by infra blocks and tech blocks and food up until now, but with the shields up, with the resources stabilizing, now it's time to think about actually making this ship a supercarrier, and Ryu is going to help us make that happen. So this guy is a great pickup at an opportune time. I'm really looking forward to turning this ship into a serious supercarrier. That'll have to wait till next time. Because this episode, we have done a couple of good deeds, rescued a couple of people, finally raised the shields, and expanded the ship a bit. And that is plenty for one episode. With things looking a little bit more stable and a little bit more positive, next episode we can add some fighters in, at last. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you'll tune in next time, and until then, this is Captain Snuggles, signing off.